So just some warnings because in this day and age where people are very afraid, they want to seek assistance and they want it now and they feel a lot of pressure. So um, do not hire a legal provider that refuses to give you a written contract. If we haven't met with you yet for your individual consultations, when we meet with you, you're going to be getting an agreement. When you, when you meet with a lawyer, you get some kind of agreement that you sign and they're sign that tells you about the services you're about to receive. So if you're not getting a written contract, the person may not be a lawyer. That's kind of the first sign. My name is Luz Medrano and I'm a staff attorney at the Hostos Immigration Center. I work with CUNY Citizenship Now. Um, okay. Do not hire a legal provider that charges you for blank immigration forms, meaning they charge you to just obtain the forms. Those are available free on the USCIS website. You don't have to pay anybody. You can even go to the public library and print them out for free. Cool. So my name's Danny. I'm a paralegal for an immigration law firm. Well, we specialize in immigration, criminal immigration. Okay. Um, or don't hire a legal provider that charges you to place you on a wait list or fast track for immigration reform. There is no immigration reform right now. There is no wait list for it. There is no getting in line for it because there is no law that exists yet. The last amnesty was 1986. And it took 12 years to pass. Hi, my name is Jesus Perez. I'm co-director of academic advisement here at Brooklyn College. And I'm also, um, the campus liaison for the Dream US uh, scholarship uh, winners. Continued, do not hire a legal provider that guarantees you a work permit or results. I always say if somebody says 100% guaranteed you're gonna get it, then run away because that person is just looking for money from you. Nobody can guarantee you anything for 100%. Part of CUNY Citizenship Now, I think, is educating people. Um, we're a pro se organization, which means that everybody represents themselves. And so when people sit down with me, I try to explain to them that, you know, they're not paying me anything, so I have no reason to lie to them, right? So they look at me confused a lot when I say that, and I say attorneys or notarios or fraudulent people will often see the desperation in your eyes and defraud you based on that, right? There's a lot of people who... Um, have no way of getting any kind of paper here right now, the way the law stands. But they feel like they should. And so scammers often will play on that kind of emotion and say, well, yeah, I, I can get you a work permit, no problem. And they can get you a work permit, but they're, what they're not telling you is that they've also put you into deportation proceedings by getting you that work permit. Um, or they take your money and don't deliver the services you promised, or they ask you to lie on a form. I think the most important part about um, it, the most important thing in giving legal advice and support is to get to get clear, uh, accurate information. Uh, to be able to get the experts, to get lawyers, uh, come speak to the students about the issues. Or a, a legal provider that keeps your original documents or charges you to return your own documents. Um, these are all just kind of red flags that you should be aware of. Like, what do you mean I can't get my own documents for free? <laughs> I just handed them to you. Make sure we have families informed of what the options are so not to be tricked. In the Latino community, there's a huge problem with people lying to their community or defrauding the community and telling people, oh, yeah, if you give me $5,000, I can get you your papers. So the first thing to do is to give families the information that they need so they don't fall victims to any of those notarios and people who lie to them about it. They couldn't get them their papers when it's not true. Mostly it happens with people that uh, trust people that are called notarios. So in um, Spanish-speaking countries and in Latin countries, South American countries, notarios are actually uh, very well-educated people. They have, they're very well-regarded. Uh, people come to them for legal help. But here in the United States, that's not the same case most of the time. A lot of these notarios aren't um, lawyers. They don't have a law degree. They don't really practice in immigration. But since they have the same uh, reputation, or, or people believe that they have the same reputation, they come to them for help. And uh, that's where it happens, really. Uh, notarios will sometimes knowingly, sometimes not even knowingly, because they don't know what they're doing, will mess up people's uh, immigration forms They'll, they'll lead them in the wrong direction. They'll charge them a lot of money. The attorneys I mean, that I work with are all ethical, 
and we're all driven by honesty. I always tell people, if you're not honest with me when I'm consulting with them, I can't be honest with you on my advice. And that's what we try to provide is ethical services. Um, so one of the big scams that we see is people who tell me about 10-year green cards. And 10-year green cards are basically um, from a form of relief in, in immigration proceedings called cancellation of removal. That's what the 10-year green card refers to. Mm -hmm. It's not an easy thing, it's not a sure thing, and it's not a quick and fast thing. But folks oftentimes tell me about, oh, this lawyer told me about the 10-year green card. And so they start to submit money and they start to submit papers for something that they may not even get. Because what they don't realize is you have to be in deportation proceedings in order to get cancellation of removal. Oh, wow. And a lot of them don't know that. Other people um, will put in uh, applications for asylum because they're told that that's a way to get a green card. But what they're also not told is that that is also going to put them into deportation proceedings if the asylum is not granted. So yes, they get a short term relief, like they get a work permit for six months, but then they're in deportation proceedings and really have no avenue. Those are two of the most common things that we see. There's these uh, paralegal services. So. Uh, sometimes you have uh, paralegal services that don't that don't have the operation of a you know they don't work under a lawyer they're just these services uh, and these people are basically just helping uh, immigrants with their forms uh, as well just like notarios do but they don't have legal experience they are just kind of like improvising as, as it goes uh, sometimes you need a lawyer and you need someone that, that is an expert in the law especially immigration law, because immigration law is so much different. So these paralegal services, they try to help, but they're not helping. Uh, they, you know, you'll spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on these, on these paralegals that, are, that believe that they're doing the right thing, but they're not. Uh, a lot of times, like I said, they, they don't, courts won't accept uh, a lot of motions if the motions aren't properly uh, Devised, like if they don't have the right for, uh, formatting, if you know, if they're, the argument is off, then the judge will just throw it out. There was a young woman who came in just the other day, and um, she said that she had an application for asylum out. And um, asylum is very tricky, and you do have to submit the application within a year of your arrival. And it seemed like she had. And she told me the attorney's name that she had hired. And I looked up the attorney on the New York State court website and I didn't see this attorney on there. And so I start to look at more information and I find out that's not an attorney. It's a tax place. Mm -hmm. And I called them and I said, oh, is Mr. So-and-so there? And they said, um, no, who's speaking or whatever. And I said, is, is he an attorney? And they, and they were kind of just going back and forth. Why? Who's asking? What are you? I, I kept saying, is he an attorney? Is he a lawyer? No, he's not a lawyer. And then I said, well, then why is he telling people that he's a lawyer? And they hung up on me. Wow. Um, and that was just like three weeks ago that this happened. Um, and really, she had no idea. She was like, oh, he told me he was a lawyer. And, I, and then, of course, in order to try and um, go after him, you know, with like the DA's office or something, they need proof that he said he was a lawyer and some kind of paper that showed that. And of course she had nothing. Um, and so it's really still happening. It happens all day, every day. And like I said, I feel like it's our community that does it to ourselves. It's like when you're an immigrant and you are within your community, you're here and you're Guyanese. You go to the Guyanese tax preparer and that person tells you, oh, I do papers too you think it's because it's your people they're going to be looking out for you they're looking out for their pocket and you're just adding to their pocket so i i had i had one person i was working with who uh basically had to we gave them a really 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 good price on uh they were trying to stay in the country and they were, they got um actually married but before that um they went to a notarios um and the notarios completely screwed them over. Uh, the guy, the man, actually ended up in immigration uh, jail uh, for he had like a petty misdemeanor from like 20 years ago. I'm talking like this guy had three kids in a house. 
Mm -hmm. and and but he just wasn't in status anymore uh he tried to go to a uh notarios the notarios completely screwed up his papers uh he was never told he he, he didn't know what was going on he was never informed the guy kind of just took his money and never heard from him again this guy was out of status got picked up by the police uh, and then the police transfer you over to to um uh to ICE, and uh, then you get put thrown into jail. Then you gotta get a lawyer. <laughs> you gotta pay that lawyer to get you out on bond. And then you gotta start, you know, trying to find forms of relief. Uh, there's a couple available to to, to illegal immigrants. Um, but the the point of the story is, he spent all this time, all this money, thinking that he was fine, just to be thrown into jail, uh, just because he trusted in the Tarios. And I think that's what people seem to think, oh, there's going to be an exception to this. But no, it takes just changing the law. One of the laws that I think they should come back is a law that expired in 2001. And that law allowed people who had either overstayed or who had entered the country illegally to pay a fine when they were getting their green card. And then they'd be able to just get their green card here. They wouldn't have to leave the country, apply for the waiver, none of those things. That law expired in 2001. I say they bring that law back. And instead of a $1,000 fine, they charge a $5,000 fine. People will still find that money. And it's a way for the government to get money. It's a way for people to legalize themselves. And it's not an amnesty. It's not the DREAM Act. It's not anything that sounds scary to all those conservatives right now. Um, I don't know. I think they're, you know, but it takes more U.S. citizens selling their legislators like, hey, we need changes in the law. And coming from New York, it's difficult because most of our legislators are on board and we, we need people from other states to push their legislators also. Yesterday, this girl came in and she's also actually getting married to a US citizen. So that's called an I-130 petition. Uh, it, you know, and uh, she is also out of status. She was from Israel and um, she went to an actual a lawyer that that didn't uh, specialize in immigration. That's another thing that happens a lot, is that you get you get a lot of lawyers that specialize in other civil things, you know, divorces, civil cases, things like that. Um, and he took over her case. Uh, he overcharged her about two times what uh, the regular market is for for what she needed. Uh, he never she never got her work authorization card. Uh, he told her that it was coming, it was coming, it was coming, it never came, and then he went completely off the face of the earth. He, no one ever saw him again. Uh, changed the number, I don't know where he went. She came to us four years after that happened because she couldn't rebound. You know, luckily, she wasn't picked up. Luckily, she never got in trouble in the past, and she was able to, you know, work for cash and, uh, and be able to, you know, basically wait it out. That's not always the case with a lot of people. An so. easy way to not be a victim of a scam is to go to free immigration place like CUNY Citizenship Now. We're not the only place that exists that offers free services. Yes, sometimes it might take you a month or two to get an appointment, but it's free and you're meeting with an attorney. Um, we have no interest in telling you a lie because we haven't received any money. So what we're telling you is the truth. And also, the third thing I would tell people is be willing to accept the truth. Because the truth is that a lot of people cannot legalize their status here right now because of how strict the laws are. And oftentimes, people don't want to hear that. And that's it. Uh, get legal help. Uh, if you uh, were under DACA, uh, there's, there, ha there could be forms of relief for you. Uh, get help before it's too late. Um, especially uh, under the new administration, you never know what's going to happen if you have. And then, in order to submit complaints of immigration fraud, these are the numbers for the different. Hmm. What's that highlight? You know, I guess you could call New York State um, for the different offices to report immigration fraud. So, you've been the victim of an of an immigration scammer. You went to someone. They said they were a lawyer. They weren't a lawyer. You paid them five thousand dollars, and they didn't give you anything. Here to submit yeah, keep your receipts, make a 
a journal of all the times that you visited, of the locations, of the names of the people you spoke to at the office. The more information and evidence you have, the more likely it is that these offices can go after these you. people. Yeah. And they are going after people, but they, you know, bring a criminal case, it's, the burden of proof is high, you really... You do have to have some kind of proof that the person held themselves out to be a lawyer. Um, and just saying it is not is not enough. <clears throat> and we always advise people, if you have been um, the victim of an immigration scam, to please report it because you're not the only person who's gone to this person and there's gonna be more people going after you. So it may not help you in your situation, but it hopefully will help someone in the future.